We still have uh, a lot of hard days ahead of us. My name is Mark Hill and I'm the incident commander of uh, Fire XY19. And um, I'm also the manager of operations program delivery at Yukon Wildlife Fire Management. So one of the reasons why you don't see any crews here is that through a combination of all the hard work that's been done over the past couple of days, the burning and the guard, this area is extremely quiet. Um, but our crews would have moved on from this because there's an area that they can actually, you know, really sink their teeth into and they're going to put in, you know, um, the time and effort they need onto the critical areas. So this would be an area that was contained early in the days of the fire and now they've moved on to different sections that have a lot more heat. So we're focusing our efforts there. So our helicopters that we have, uh, we use for a combination of reconnaissance flights. Um, often you'll hear the term recce flight but we use them to do reconnaissance and to build a game plan. So it's very difficult often just being on the ground to figure out where you want to move crews or where you want to um, engage particular uh, strategic sections of the fire. So we use them to do reconnaissance. And then some of our other air, uh, aircraft, we have our rotary wing, um, the Super Puma currently bucketing. Um, it will be bucketing sections that are very inaccessible for our crews. Um, those would be high priority parts of the fire that we're using our aircraft to bucket consistently. And then on top of that, we're going to be using the aircraft to move crews into, uh, you know, distant edges of the fire, um, into helipads that we've been creating through the last couple of days. Well, fire doesn't like to move through dirt. So uh, that's, the, that's the basic rationale. Um, what you do is you try to remove all the fuel, any combustible fuel, um, um, in front of the line of the fire um, to stop that fire. Yeah, we're going to use a combination of hand ignition, um, hand tools, um, putting in the guard, and then uh, using pump and hose um, to bring the fire to the edge and then put it out. It is without question one of the most effective ways to uh, contain, secure a fire and, and put it out. There's going to be heat in the middle of the fire, but what we're interested in is the edge. It's the edge that's going to um, cause us the most issues for now. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, at some point we would move towards full containment, but, you know, large weather systems will also assist in that. But in the early days, what we're trying to do is contain it. So rain does not put fire out. Um, staff will put the fire out. But rain really allowed us to have a couple of a couple of days where the fire activity was calmed down enough for us to really get around the critical sections that were um, exhibiting really dramatic, intense fire activity. Areas that were unsafe for our crews to get into, the rain allowed us a couple of days to get in, put in guards, get in the hose lay and start to get around it. I want to caution the public though that we're not by any means, any stretch of the imagination, um, fully secure on this fire but the rain has given us a great opportunity to make some uh, good progress. Success looks like um, the entire edge of this fire is quiet. Um, we'll have people on this fire um, for the coming weeks until we feel comfortable that the fire yeah. is, uh, is completely secure and no threat to the public, uh, infrastructure or values. No, I'm not worried about things. I think that at the end of the day, this is what we do and we prepare um, to serve the Yukon and, and the people of the Yukon the best way we can. And uh, we're just going to, you know, um, tackle each challenge as it comes. Um, obviously, the dry weather and the dry fuels are a challenge to firefighters. Um, and uh, there's a possibility that we're going to see more fires in the territory in the days to come. So our goal right now is really just to get this fire as contained and controlled as quickly as possible so we can take our firefighters and have them prepared to uh, tackle the next blaze that we need to uh, take on. Absolutely, it's still a notable, notable fire, um, partly due to the proximity to Whitehorse. Uh, it's close to the community here in the Tikini River Valley. I'm in the Ibex Valley, so um, absolutely this is a fire where we're putting as much resources and energy on as possible, and we're gonna continue to do that until we feel that the fire is, is uh, safe and secure.
I think every fire has its own challenges. Um, you know, a smaller fire near a community can be as challenging as a much larger fire, but out in the wilderness. Um, so each fire has their challenges, but uh, with the dry conditions that we're experiencing here in the Yukon right now, um, this fire definitely presented a number of challenges to firefighters. And I'm really proud of our staff um, and the team out here, the way that they uh, came together and uh, supported one another and the way that the Yukoners supported us um, in tackling this place. I think the public needs to understand that while um, we've seen a fire um, season across Canada that hadn't really affected the Yukon, that uh, we're certainly not out of the woods by any means and that uh, I would encourage everybody to be safe in the woods, uh, to be safe about preventing fires, uh, you know. Uh, we don't need more fire in the landscape than we already have and uh, um, that uh, you know um, i really appreciate them supporting our team and supporting the yukon government as we uh, we work to uh, contain this fire